A very wise YouTuber once said there are two kinds of cool. The first kind of cool in a ham radio sense is evolutionary stepping up the ladder of amateur radio. Take the ICOM 7300, right? When it came out, internal tuner, waterfall, single USB connection, 100 watt base station transmitter at a, an affordable price, at least, you know, in ham talk. The second kind of cool, the second kind of cool is almost an intangible kind of cool. It's a cool that you just personally think is cool, and you'll be damned if anyone tells you differently. Uh, case in point for me, that would be the Alinko DJ C5 credit card radio that came out in the 90s. It's definitely not for everybody, and when it came out, it was like cutting-edge cool in the sense of how weird it is. And you definitely know that I have a, a past of doing videos about quirky radios like the Pico AP. PRS, another second kind of cool rate. Well, that's also first kind of cool. It's both kinds of cool. Anyway, I digress. Today we're talking about a second type of cool. This is the Gyoho Tech 119, which gives vibes of a Harris PRC 117 man pack HF radio that they use in the military. And, and that's actually kind of the style of this. Gyoho Tech doesn't make any apologies about this radio. It is designed to look like a military radio and kind of function in that sense with its push button controls. We're gonna take a look at it today. This was kind of a difficult radio for me to review with uh, reasons that I'm gonna get into. But let me first off, just cover the basics. It is a 20 watt, and that varies depending on what band you are operating on. It's mostly all band radio. And when anybody tells you it's an all band radio, they basically mean 80 meter HF through 10 meters, and sometimes six meters is included in that HF. And then usually VHF, two meters, and then 70 centimeters UHF. Sometimes, although incredibly rarely, it'll cover 1.2 meters, that is not included in this because I see it listed, but I could not transmit on any of those frequencies. With that said, it will receive the off ham band, so it has some air band, um, as well as you can just kind of dial around with the, v the VFO and not have much of a problem. Now, from my point of view, this is a pretty expensive radio. At the time of recording off of their website, it's going for $1,800, but that comes with additional accessories that you might not get with a standard HF base station, and this is also all mode, again, VHF, UHF. It also comes with an antenna system, both for HF and for VHF, UHF. The body of this is separated with this little foam material, and I'll just give you the spoiler alert. It does come with a bunch of antennas here and that is going to be your whip for VHF, UHF, and then it has kind of a military type water resistant connector and a telescope, a fold out vertical whip that you can use. This kind of sticks into place if you're out and about. So in the kit, you get the radio, the battery, a charger, and then there's a USB cable and uh, I've already put a toroid on here, which I'll explain why in a little bit. All the connectors are a military type connector. I actually don't know what this one is called. You can let me know in the chat what you think that is. And I also threw in a GPS receiving antenna that I've not gotten to work. So that's probably for a future video or something along those lines. And then there's a very military style hand receiver. And yeah, it's microphone and, and speaker. And, and the speaker is loud enough that you can hear it uh, just without having to put it to your ear, which is kind of nice. There's also a USB extension cable, which, okay, if you don't have, if you don't want to use this connector, you can plug this one in and plug the USB onto that, which is also an option. Let's take a look at this. I'll pull this guy out. You kind of have to get your hand underneath it. There you go. And I'll free the battery at the same time. This is similar to the other Gyoho Tech, but um, you, you, you have to lift up here, free both arms, then take your radio, line it up, and then with your hand on top here, seat both of these first, then push them down. And it is a very strong fit. It feels like it's eight to 10 pounds, but I'll get you a, a final number on that 
and I'll, I'll post it uh, on the video right now. Interfacing all the little things here, there's a TNC connector. That's gonna be for your VHF UHF. There is a BNC for the HF connection. And there's an outer threaded column here, or threaded connector, and that's for the waterproof adapter. But you can just put in any old BNC in here and you can use it that way. There is a GPS antenna connection. This is your connection for the mic and speaker connector, which I'll just go ahead and take it in. It's keyed in one direction. So you take it and push it home. It locks into place and you're good. There's the handset. You can kind of clip it on the side there if you wanted to. And then last but not least, there is this connection that we talked about on the USB there. There's that data connection. The way you operate this is kind of in this vertical configuration. So I'm gonna grab the antenna and I'm gonna show you how to set that up. And then we'll try out some, uh, some radio. I haven't decided which is the more effective way of mounting the antenna. Like do you put the nub and base on first or do you, I think the best way is probably gonna be to do it with this collapsed, get this screwed into place. Okay, BNC connector comes off, and then this just threads on. Take the end whip and start building that up first. And bring it home. That's it, that's all there is to it, pretty easy. So for a lot of you, this is going to be a weird radio to get around. Everything's push button, and you hit the power button, hold it down, and the radio will turn on. You can set your call sign, but for the life of me, I've had a very difficult time doing that. The screen is about the size of a G90 screen. Yeah, about the same size as a G90 screen. It goes through this little self-check. We were doing some FT8 before I was playing around with it, so... That's kind of where it's at right now. And, and to change frequencies, it's it's pretty straightforward. You use the arrow keys to move the little underline around. In this case, it's on four. So if I just start clicking up, we'll move through the band. You can jump that up even further by going to that. Now we're up too high, so let's bring this down. Okay, cool. We see some activity, so let's see if we can find something there. Now these are, uh, I believe, non or powered relays, so we're not tuned up right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll off band, and I'm gonna hold down the tune button, and now we get a tune. I'll go back up. Now AF is gonna be your volume, and let's crank that up a little bit. My radio shack here and uh, getting some shelving and stuff put up. Uh, I really like how yours looks. And I'm on the pan mic. Now I am in the FT8 mode, so let's change out of that by clicking the mode button. There's upper sideband, but. Oh, that doesn't look like the right bandwidth, so we'll click bandwidth, and we'll cycle through it. So I have a vertical Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. So a lot of the controls are all push button and then arrow key. So if I wanted to go to H volume, I could bump that up. Mic gain, compressor, bass and treble if you were so inclined to mess around with that. The RF button is going to change your radio uh, frequency gain, your IFG, your squelch. Your AGC, which this AGC, I've noticed that when you're on it, it, it almost like makes it slow versus fast. Uh, and if you hold down mode when you're in USB, it switches it to 
lower sideband versus upper sideband, and you can cycle through with that. Now, the PA button's kind of interesting. So this is a 20-watt output radio, but if you hold down the button, it puts it into low power mode, which conserves the battery, only making it a maximum of 5 watts, which some of you might want to do, depending. If you hit the band button, you can control which band you're in. Makes sense. And if you hold it down, now you get into the CW mode. So with this, you can actually turn on a training mode. Uh, there is a decode, I believe. Where is it? Yeah, decode is off. So let's turn that on. There we go. And we're going to go back to L for that. And we'll take it out of that. So hypothetically, if we go down... Now, truth be told, it's not so accurate with the guy supplying to him. But the first uh, first participant here in this contact was pretty good, although that looks like the call sign. I wasn't paying attention to the audio. Power output was pretty much as advertised, with the only exception being UHF 70 centimeters. All right, so keying down, it looks like we are getting... About one to one SWR and 18.58, da 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 da, about the same uh, on transmit on two meters. 1.1, that's pretty good. 1.01 1 .01 to one. I mean, this meter is somewhat suspect, but there you go. So it's a heavy radio with that included battery, which gives you about 16 volts of power. So it's actually running off of a 16 volt system. At least that's what it's displaying on the screen, which is pretty interesting. Now, what makes it cool is that it comes in this like James Bond attache case uh, that almost feels like literally like a military case. Like you would be opening it up and you'd have access to the radio and all the discriminate parts laid out. And then there's a false top that comes down and that's where the antenna pits are. And the antenna, when you have it set up man pack style, literally shoots out the top of the radio and you run it with the internal tuner. I found the antenna set up, particularly on HF, to be totally intuitive and easy to use. We did test it on the air, trying to make some contacts on 40 meters, uh, not with the stock antenna. That probably will not do well on 40, but we hooked it up to my step IR. It's a dipole, folded dipole, so I'm not getting much gain off of that. And I couldn't make a contact, largely because I was calling CQ at night, but did hop on the SDRs and this is what we found. Uh, pay attention to that green slash there and, and just listen, okay, just listen. Okay, so we, we made it to northern Utah. Let's uh, let's go back. Active dipole and loop over ground. Okay, Fort Collins, Colorado. Why not? Ready for this? Ready? Here we go. It's, it's barely audible, but it's in there, so that's probably the the furthest out you can go. But it, it did sound okay in a Salt Lake or around that area, Ogden-ish area. Let's uh, let's see if we go. We got to do the boy. Is this the boy? Yeah, Half Moon Bay. It's probably lines up with people, though. Rough night, though. S3, S4. I'm looking at that green flashing line there. That's kind of a high noise floor. Uh-oh. Okay. Let's give it, give, it, give it a whirl. Not bad. That's the, the delay. There's a term I've mentioned in the past called LARPing. That's an acronym for live action role playing. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Sleep! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Sleep! Lightning bolt! So this feels like that for like military comms, right? It, it gives you that military communications vibe if that's the kind of like lifestyle that you want to live in or that you want a waterproof box where you can just do single sideband because, uh, spoiler alert, I tried to use this on FT8 and I found regardless of which laptop I used when I plugged a USB into the radio and the computer, copious amounts of noise on the radio itself. USB. I have a choke for common mode, and we've got a heap of noise. Let me unplug it, it goes away. So there's a problem here. 
it didn't matter how many times I wrapped that in a Toroid or anything like that, it was just full of noise. So that makes it a little difficult to do digital. And also, you can't really do Morse code with it because there's no key plug. The mic will function as a PTT or a key, if you will, but even when in hand key mode, it won't let you um, actually hand key. If you, if you press it down, it wants to start giving just automatic dits, regardless of what the settings are. So if you're looking for something that is a little bit like this, smaller, more packable, you might want to look at the Gyohotech PMR117, which is its littler brother that does all those things. And it, it's literally this guy, it's this, it's this little guy, which, um, you know, you've got that back plane with all the IO we talked about on another video. And uh, yeah, this does all, all the things, just in a, in a much smaller platform in comparison to its much bigger brother. In fact, here's a size comparison image to show you the differences between these two radios. It is an interesting radio. I will kind of leave it at that. I am not this person that wants this radio. I want a radio that can do Morse code, digital, small, <laughs> highly portable. I don't have a problem with QRP. You know I love QRP, but I want something that's so full of features it's overstuffed with them, even if that means I have to go down to five watts to make that happen. That's always gonna be my jam. Man pack to me with a kind of a compromised vertical antenna where you just tune the heck out of it to bend it to your will is an option that a lot of people like and this antenna is it's really not that cumbersome to maneuver around it was it was really easy to get it set up in the field and use it when i was at the park and other places without any problem this is such a kind of a niche product for a niche person that uh, most hams this is probably not their cup of tea. But there's some of you that are looking at this, they're probably like drooling at the mouth about how cool you think this is. And as far as audio quality goes, I think once I got the bandwidth tuned right, the filter size, both the start of the, the transmission and the, the width of the transmission, it sounded really good even on that hand mic. <laughs> Other thing to keep in mind, that hand mic is not a proprietary connector, but it's a connector you probably don't want to monkey around with, and I don't see an option to swap that out for your own microphone solution. So it's kind of an all-inclusive little unit, and you're supposed to use all the pieces together, which do work, but that's it. This is the thing, you use this thing, and you better be happy about it. So that's it for me today. What are your thoughts on the TBR119? Sound off in the comments below. There will be links in the description for you to go check it out if you want, or at least just go to the website and look up the manual because it does go into greater detail and give you some information. There are accessories for this, like an actual backpack so you can run it, I guess, Vietnam era style, where you can have the whip sticking up. And I think they're actually sending me one of those, so I am going to try that. That might be kind of fun. Uh, it's not a small radio, and it's not light, so maybe it'll make me think of a time when my dad was in the Vietnam War. But he was in the Air Force and was stationed in Karat, Thailand, so I don't think he was anywhere near uh, any kind of man pack radio. Anyway, big shout out and thank you to Gyoho Tech for letting me take a look at this radio. It is cool in its own very specific way, and I really do appreciate you putting it out there for me to take a look at it. And uh, yeah, 73, everybody. See ya.